Hey, what's up guys? This is Shane back with Hoosier Hardware. And today I'm starting off this series where we are gonna look at a few Windows alternatives for those of you that wanna ditch Windows as your uh, normal desktop. So without any more build up, I'm gonna keep this short, quick, and easy for you. We're looking at Linux Mint 18 Sarah. Oh yeah, um, the cinnamon version. Okay, let's hop right into this sort of review of Linux Mint 18 Sara. Um, it's actually not a review, more of an overview. Um, with the base question that I want us to keep in mind as I go through these things, these features that I like or dislike. That question is, can Linux Mint 18 replace Windows or Mac as the daily driver for the average consumer and by that I mean the person that is just using their PC to hop online, watch Netflix, maybe some local videos and music, and not really do much else with their computers other than also some email on top of that. So we're not talking about gamers and we're not talking about professionals that are using it for work, we're talking about the average consumer, so everybody's parents, basically. Okay, so let's hop right into this. Um, I have OBS going so I can show you this screen without you know having the camera on the screen. Helps me out a lot. Um, you'll notice that the desktop looks a lot like a Windows desktop when you first boot into it. Now, one of the first things you should notice if you are familiar with Linux Mint is that I've already done some tweaking with this. Um, and that'll take me straight into the customizable aspects of um, Linux Mint. So if I hit the Windows key and just type in themes, I can bring up my themes menu and I can adjust the theme however I want and this is just like Windows. So I can take it back to the Mint, or the, the Mint X theme which is the default um, for most. There's Mint and we're just gonna go with the cinnamon theme and Voila, we now have that classic Linux Mint green going on. The other thing that you may have noticed I changed is if I click on configure on the start button, which is to make those of you that are on Windows a little bit more comfortable with what's going on here, I can change this back to the default menu. And also with this use custom icon, you can actually change this little gear icon to whatever you want. Now the default when this is unchecked is just the Linux Mint logo. So we're gonna leave that back to where it is. Um, another advantage of Linux Mint that Windows um, does not have, but Mac, the Mac side does have, is if you go into the Software Manager, which is right here, and then you type in your password, you have access to thousands upon thousands of applications that you can just quickly download um, without touching the terminal, which is a concern I'll get to in a minute, and you never have to run into that sort of issue. So. One of the problems that I used to have with the software manager is that it doesn't have all of the common applications. And by the way, it still doesn't have all the common applications you're going to want. But I checked, and if you type in Chrome, they actually have Google's Chrome browser there. They have the beta version and the stable version um, available. And they obviously also still have the Chromium browser and any other sort of browsers you might want. Um, they have tons of different applications. That's one that you just sort of have to go into and play around with and find the things that you need. Also bundled with Linux Mint is going to be some basic applications like uh, LibreOffice, which is the Microsoft Office replacement. It does a good job with that. I've personally made more of a transition to uh, Google Docs almost completely at this point. So for me, the Office application of choice here, it doesn't really make a difference for me. Um, sound and video, one of the big ones that I like to see is that it has a VLC media player with it. Now, I did check the box during the installation to install third-party applications and drivers, um, so some of these might not be there if you don't install those third-party applications, drivers, that sort of thing. Um, but I, I always check that box because it makes the, um, the end user experience out of the box just much better because you don't have to worry about drivers, codecs, that sort of thing. You don't have to worry about compatibility with wireless cards. Everything works out of the box just great, just like any other Windows or Mac PC. So one of the drawbacks that I sort of alluded to earlier was the terminal, and that is if you have an application that does not have an all-in-one installer for you, a lot of times you'll have to type in these commands. Most of the time you can just Google those and then copy and paste. I'm not really familiar with terminal commands, so that's my choice or, or the way I do things always anyways. But if you are uncomfortable with the terminal and are not comfortable looking up commands online and then copy and pasting them in there to get what you or where you need to go, you may want to rethink Linux Mint as your operating system. 
So that sort of leads us into the conclusion. Does Linux Mint do a good job of replacing Macintosh operating system? Or just Mac, I believe now. And the Windows operating system for the average consumer, which just does some email and a lot of online activities. In that regard, I say, yes, it does. It does everything out of the box that it really needs to. It has application replacements for those core applications in, in Windows and Mac that help the average consumer do the random document typing or letter typing or whatever that case may be. And it just works. Is it perfect for everyone? Absolutely not. I mentioned at the start of this video that you should not go Linux Mint if you are a gamer or if you are directed down a specific path by your work. This is simply a video talking about does it replace the average consumer's PC for the core things that most people do online, like email, um, Twitter, Netflix, some local media files, and occasionally typing something up for those things. Linux Mint does a great job. It's completely free. Um, and it's just one of tons of Linux distributions. I hope to look at several more down the road. But for my money, the Linux Mint distribution 18, the Cinnamon version, um, codename Sarah, gives a big thumbs up. If you like these Linux distribution overviews, you need to go ahead and hit that like button down below. Also that subscribe button down below so I know that you're paying attention to me. Also my Twitter handle is at Hoosier Hardware. So I'm Shane from Hoosier Hardware and I will see you in the next video.